Science is all around us. Just about every activity we do can be broken down into some type of scientific equation. And cooking is no different. Your kitchen is a laboratory, and every time you make dinner, you are conducting a scientific experiment. Here, every ingredient is a component, and every recipe is a chemical equation for a delicious way to learn about the science of cooking. We've invited Chef Paula from the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services to prepare a nutritious breakfast to start the day off right. We're getting ready to prepare a delicious breakfast of Fiesta scrambled eggs with blender salsa. Before we begin cooking, we'll need to pick up a few things. So, let's go shopping. We need to pick up some of the non-produce items on our shopping list. We have some butter, large eggs, milk, and shredded cheddar cheese. Now let's check out the fresh produce. First, let's get the vegetables. One sweet onion, some fresh spinach, and for the fruit, we'll need some tomatoes. A red and a green bell pepper, a jalapeno pepper for a little bit of heat, one lime, and one avocado. Wait a minute. Did she say that tomatoes and peppers were fruit? I thought they were vegetables. Let's bring in Dr. Matthew Curran, a real scientist, to tell us the difference between a fruit and a vegetable. Well, when trying to distinguish the difference between a fruit and a vegetable, ask this simple question. Does it have seeds? If so, then it's pretty much a fruit. Technically, the fruit is the fleshy part of the plant that holds the seed. A vegetable is basically defined as the edible part of a plant, whether it's the leaf like on lettuce, a stalk like celery, or a root like a carrot. Hey, hey, you know what that means. It's time to play fruit or vegetable. The zany game show where I'll read you a list of delicious fresh fruits and vegetables grown right here in Florida, and you have to guess if it's a fruit or a vegetable. Ready? Let's begin. Bell pepper is a fruit. Green beans are a fruit. Carrot is a vegetable. Tomato is a fruit. Onion is a vegetable. Cabbage is a vegetable. Orange is a fruit. So how did you do? If you have trouble telling the difference, just remember this rhyme. If it has a seed, it's a fruit indeed. If it's an edible part, then it's a vegetable. Eh, I didn't say it was a good rhyme. Dr. Matt, are there any other major differences between fruit and vegetables? Yes, for consumption, there is one other major difference. Vegetables, because they are the edible part of the plant, are generally ready to eat once grown. Fruits, on the other hand, have to go through a ripening process before they become palatable. And it all begins with a little gas. Young, unripe fruit is often green, sour, odorless, and hard. But as it gets older, and ethylene gas is released, several things start to happen. The acids that make the fruit sour break down. The starches are converted into sugar. Hard fiber, called pectin, is softened. The skin color changes as the green stuff in plants, called chlorophyll, breaks down and large aromatic molecules are made into smaller ones that then evaporate and create an aroma. Suddenly, we have a soft, juicy, sweet, and fragrant ingredient for our meal. What, guys? I'm ripening. Now that we know what happens when fruit ripens, how can we tell if we're buying ripe fruit? When you're cooking with fresh produce, it's important to pick produce that is ripe. That's when it has the most flavor. With an avocado, you want to make sure that you press it to see if it gives a little bit. That's how you know it's ripe. I'm going to go pay for these, and I'll see you back at the kitchen. 
Well, that's all the time we have for now. We learned the difference between a fruit and a vegetable, as well as what makes fruit ripen. But these are just a few ingredients in the science that goes into preparing a meal. Be sure to join us for the next episode of The Science of Cooking. Thank <laughs> you.